Pi is solved, no math needed. <coughs> Pi, we're told it's 22 over 7. Essentially, someone worked out that a circle with a circumference of 22 units had a diameter of 7 units. Therefore, this relationship works on all circles. We will provide three things to solve the problem. One, a window on presupposition. Two, an understanding of perspective. And three, the existence of two-dimensional objects. Step one, a window on presupposition. Three people walk into a restaurant. The waiter tells them it's Tuesday and today's special is a burger. It comes with fries and a drink for $10 and a piece of apple pie for dessert. He seats them all at the same table. After a few moments, all three of them choose the Tuesday special. At the end of the meal, the waiter gives them each a bill. They give him the money, which he takes to the cashier. The cashier tells the waiter, on Tuesday, any bill of $30 or more receives a $5 discount, and she gives the waiter $5 back. The waiter is confused. How do I split $5 into three equal parts? He decides the best plan is to give each of the people $1 back and keep $2 for himself. The three people are happy because they saved an extra dollar, and the waiter is happy because he got a $2 tip. Unfortunately, later that day the waiter works out that someone has robbed him of a dollar. He calculates the people actually paid $9 each when you consider the dollar he gave them back. 3 times 9 is 27. He kept 2. 27 plus 2 equals 29. Where did the extra dollar go? Step 2. An understanding of perspective. If we take that 22 unit rolled out circle, let's call it 22 inches, and then half it, and then half it again, how many times would you have to half it before the ends touch or disappear? The answer should be, it actually never does touch. We just lose the ability to measure something that small. So we could say it's touching if we can no longer measure it or see it. Of course, the problem with that is sometime in the next 5,000 years, we'll find a way to see and measure even smaller things. Then we'll look back and say, what were they thinking? There's still lots of room to keep halving this thing. So take a look at the diagram, and what do we see? A straight line or a curve? To the naked eye, it looks like a curve. Remember step one, how easy it was to make us lose a dollar? Let's look at this from a different perspective. Now it's two straight lines disappearing to infinity. Curve or straight line? Sometimes it's just a perspective. Step 3. Understanding a two-dimensional object. To exist as a two-dimensional object, the object must have two dimensions. Let's go back to our unrolled circle. It has a length of 22 inches, but we must give it a second dimension in order for it to exist as a two-dimensional object. To make our line exist as a two-dimensional object, let's say we need to make it one inch wide. Going back to perspective, we could half it until we can't measure any more, but it will never reach zero, just like the two ends never meet. If we make the width zero, eliminate one of the dimensions, then it ceases to exist as a two-dimensional object. Now we have all the tools necessary to resolve pi, so let's do it. Take our two-dimensional object 22 inches long and one inch wide and bend it back into a circle. Whoops! Look what happens when you measure the length around different circumferences. One end doesn't touch. Remember step one, the missing dollar? Three nines are 27. Plus two equaled 29. Where did the extra dollar go? Well, the answer is the three people gave the waitress $30 and the final bill was $25. 3 times 9 is 27, minus the $2 the waitress kept equals 25, which is what they really paid. The answer to pi is just as plain. As we see, if we start out with a two-dimensional rectangle of any fixed width, the outside cannot make a circle. If we make the outside into a circle, then the inside is overlapped, and this condition has to be included in your calculation. In our case, with an inside diameter of 7 inches and a thickness of 1 inch, we have a circumference of over 28 inches. The circumference of 22 inches cannot be achieved for a two-dimensional circle with a line 1 inch thick 
and a diameter of 7 inches in two-dimensional space. So what about a line of 0 inches thickness, a one-dimensional line? What is the circumference of a one-dimensional line drawn into a circle of 7 inch diameter in one-dimensional space? Remember step 2, perspective? It looks like a circle, but it's really a straight line. In one-dimensional space, the circumference of a circle with a 7 inch diameter is 7 inches. So a circumference of 22 inches cannot be achieved for a one-dimensional circle with a diameter of 7 inches and a line of 0 inches thick in one-dimensional space. So what about a one-dimensional circle in two-dimensional space? Back to step 3, the two-dimensional rectangle. It has a length and a width. We can calculate the area as length times width. But what about volume? If we move the two-dimensional rectangle through the third dimension, we can measure that movement and calculate the volume. Length times width times the distance moved. What if we only use one of the original dimensions? Can we get volume? Length times distance moved? Nope, that's just area. Width times distance moved? Nope, that's just area. To move from area to volume, you must include all the values of the two-dimensional object and combine them with the new dimension, how far it moved in three-dimensional space. The same is true for a one-dimensional object. When a one-dimensional object passes through two-dimensional space, the area created can only be calculated using the values of the previous dimension combined with the values of the new dimension. A circumference of 22 inches cannot be achieved for a one-dimensional object creating a diameter of 7 inches in two-dimensional space. So one way to create an area using a one-dimensional line is to move it in two-dimensional space. A second way would be the area created by joining one-dimensional lines in two-dimensional space. Pi can be set by an arbitrary establishment of values in the same way we created a mile, a kilogram, or a second. So let's arbitrarily change the name from pi to centium, just because we can. Let's construct our arbitrary circle and see what happens. We already have 360 degrees in a circle. It sounds like a good number, so let's combine 360 lines to make our circle. Keep it simple and make our circle one unit in diameter. Being arbitrary is fun, so let's take the circumference of the Earth and divide it by 360 to set the length of our one-dimensional lines. It turns out that length is 111.3 kilometers. Convert this line down to fit our one unit circle and it becomes 0 0.00873. Multiply the number of lines used to make our circle by their length to get our circumference. On a circle of one unit, the circumference you get is the exact same as your new constant, Celsius. No math needed. But two issues still remain. One, if it's easy to use a standard circle of one unit, why did they use seven units? Seven is the only number from one to ten that cannot be divided into 360. Two, was the old pi more accurate than the new Celsius? To answer these questions, we need only go back about 50 years to my hometown of Nottingham. Let's look at the waiter situation. They used old money back then, and people use fractions, not percentages. At the end of the meal, the waiter gives them each a bill of 10 shillings, and they give him the money which he takes to the cashier. The cashier tells the waiter, on Tuesday, any bill of 30 shillings or more receives a 5 shilling discount, and she gives the waiter 5 shillings back. There are 12 pennies in each shilling. So sharing the five shillings between the three people was easy. They all get 20 pennies each, or as they would have said, one shilling and eight pence. So the police would not be needed. Pi was originally a one unit circle, just like ours. They had a diameter of one royal cubit and a circumference of three and one seventh royal cubits. This was made possible for them because one royal cubit is seven palms long. So they would have said the circumference is three royal cubits and one palm long. They could measure it. No math needed. Pi was not the result of the circumference divided by the diameter. 
That didn't work back then, just like it doesn't work now. Pi, or centium, is the result of the number of one-dimensional lines used to construct a circle, times their length. And this is determined by either creating a standard, or by the accuracy of your measurement method. Translating that back to how long their one-dimensional lines would need to be to make their circle, three cubits and one palm long, in Earth terms, it gives us 310 lines of 129 and one-seventh kilometer each. So our new standard Sensium is actually 18.21 kilometers more accurate. Our standard circle with 360 lines multiplied by their length of 0 0.00873 produces a circumference of 3.1428 exactly. Divide this by our diameter of 1 and nothing changes. So our new constant Sensium would equal 3.1428 exactly, and that could be our standard sensium for all circles.